Please join me in prayer. Gracious and loving God, help us this day to understand and celebrate your dream for the world, to be transformed in Jesus' love, and to use our gifts to make a difference for others. Amen. Mm. This has been a big week in our nation. This past Wednesday at the inauguration, we transferred power to a new administration. But those moments for me are more than about transferring of power. At their best, those moments can draw me back into my life as a citizen and my ideal, the ideals of our nation. In a way, about, uh, they remind me about what our nation's calling is. And so it's great to have a uh, day, a Sunday, when our readings are all about calling. There are a lot of different kinds of calling. There's the little c calling. That's what I name it, little c, our own individual calling. The kind of calling that comes when we discern what our individual gifts are and what the needs of the world are and, and what our passions for life are and what our limitations are. And we put all those together and we, we decide what to do for a for a vocation, or we decide how to live this day in our family. Each of those is a, a calling, little c. And there's also calling big c. And that's call, God's calling to all people of faith, or even all of creation. It's, it's, it's the calling of God that envelops every small calling in which every individual calling works toward. And in today's reading, we have both types of calling, particularly in the story of Jonah. This story is a favorite for children's authors because how great to be able to uh, illustrate a person in the belly of a fish. But it's the bigger story that really talks about calling. There's Jonah's calling, little c, his individual calling to go to Nineveh. An Assyrian city, fearsome, violent, oppressive, to go to them and to warn them that they must turn from their ways. They must think in a new way. They must turn away from their acts of violence and oppression. But Jonah doesn't go. Jonah doesn't go. Is he afraid to go because it's such a fearsome place? Well, we find out at the end of the story. In the meantime, he's a lousy prophet, and he doesn't listen to God's word, and he runs away, and he gets on a ship, and there's a big storm, and he gets thrown over the side of the ship and swallowed by a fish where he has three days to ponder, to ponder his inobedience to God, disobedience to God. Finally, the fish spits him out. And he says, well, I better go to Nineveh. And he does, and he goes to Nineveh, and he proclaims his, uh, his word from God, and indeed, the people of Nineveh do repent. And Jonah goes out into the desert and lies in the sun, and is all mopey, and, and God comes to Jonah and says, Jonah, why are you so sad? The people of Nineveh repented. And then we hear why Jonah really is such a lousy prophet. Because Jonah had forgotten God's real calling, the big calling, the big C. Jonah didn't go to Nineveh because Jonah was afraid they would repent. Jonah was afraid God would forgive them. Jonah wanted them to suffer. Jonah tells God, I didn't go because I know that you were a God, a merciful God, slow to anger ready to relent and forgive. Jonah forgot who God was and what his calling really was. I'm in a group, it's a sacred ground, discussion group around race and racism and overcoming those things in our souls and in our country. This particular group is a clergy group. And this week we spoke about trauma. Trauma, those things that happen to us that wound us and hurt us. 
trauma, the things that short circuit our way of being in the world as we build up barriers to protect ourselves. Trauma that moves from generation to generation. And we were talking about trauma in the context of criminal justice. In trying to figure out why are so many poor people, why are so many people of color filling our prisons? And one thread that they saw was trauma. That in the vast majority of these cases, these people had grown up with neglect or abuse, things that had hurt them. And as often happens with trauma, people who are hurt hurt others. And it was a deep reflection about how the system, and maybe even how some individuals in the system viewed these people, these traumatized people who had hurt other people, how they viewed them. And that the goal of much of the justice system was to punish them. Thinking that punishment was in some way uh, restorative. But true restorative justice, we were reminded, has not to do with punishment, but with mercy. The same mercy that Jonah forgot when he refused to go to Nineveh. The same mercy that is the very work of God in this world in all times and in all places, which is to take that which is broken and heal it, and to take that which has gone array, or astray and bring it back, which is to restore things to what we always call in church on Sunday the dream of God. That is God's calling all of creation. That kind of restorative mercy. And the reason Jonah was a lousy prophet was because he forgot that. There's a wonderful prayer in the wisdom of Solomon that one of our group members shared with me, and I want to share it with you because it speaks so eloquently of God's calling for everyone by reminding us who God is. It goes, O oh God, you are merciful to all, for you can do all things. And you overlook people's sins so that they may repent. For you love all things that exist and detest none of the things that you have made. For you would not have made anything if you hated it. How would anything have endured if you had not willed it? Or how would anything not called forth from you been preserved? You spare all things, for they are yours, O Lord, you who love the living. For your immortal spirit is in all things. Therefore you correct, little by little, those who trespass. And you remind and warn them of the things through which they sin, so that they may be freed from wickedness and put their trust in you. That's our calling, big C. It's the calling we need to remember wherever we go. It's the calling we remember as we think about this new time in our nation's life, a nation so divided, even families divided. It's the calling we need to remember as we Think about how we will reach out to those who are broken and traumatized. It's the calling that we carry with us each and every day as we go to work and talk with our families. And yes, 
it's, it's the calling that we have about how we treat ourselves. Mercifully. You and I, as prophets, as proclaimers, as people with a vocation, probably fall somewhere between the lousy prophet Jonah, who both ran away and never really understood God's calling, and those disciples whom Jesus called on the seashore, who dropped their nets and followed immediately. I imagine you and I fall somewhere in between those. But let us not forget, as we work out our little calling every way, every day, the calling of mercy. And let us not run away from the grace and the beauty of that calling and the power of God in God's mercy to restore all things to the fullness of life. Amen.